Good evening. And, you know, uh, this is our first episode of the Positive Deposits podcast. So just want to introduce myself. My name, I go by the name of Presley Nelson Jr. Um, I am a two-time cancer survivor and I am the president, proud president of Positive Deposits. Um, I'm currently in Washington, D.C., Howard alum. And, you know, um, the reason why I started Positive Deposits is basically because I think that um, sharing our story, sharing our journey is very important. Um, I made cancer look a little bit too easy, you know, that's what some people say. Um, uh, but I think that the, the mental is so powerful and how your body can heal, how your body can be motivated. And just like I encourage uh, others to share their story, um, our form positive deposited, positive deposits to um, encourage and support cancer survivors, just like, you know, Thomas, who we'll get into to, to introduce to him later, but to not only to have these co courageous conversations that we're having now, but also to have support programs, you know, some things that are coming up. We have a live cooking class where we'll teach uh, and show cancer survivors some healthy recipes, you know. Um, we have cancer appreciation brunches, and then also just the fundraising piece, you know. One of the things that it was important to me is that, you know, having that support system and, you know, sometimes had not, not, if I didn't have insurance, you know, I don't know how I would have made it. And so positive deposits is, it has three pillars, the courageous conversations. We also have the fundraising piece and then the community outreach and impact. And so um, the reason why this podcast means a lot, because this is our courageous conversations where uh, courageous cancer survivors have a platform where they can not only share their journey, but share some of the things that are positive about their journey that help them be a, not only a survivor now, but just stronger in their steps in their lives. So um, I'm just so glad to have one of my good friends um, tonight here with me, um, none other than Mr. Ballsy, um, but you know, Mr. Cantley. Um, and uh, mm -hmm. you know, he is an amazing person. And so just to give you a little background of Mr. Ballsy, he is a stage three testicular cancer survivor, filmmaker, writer, motivational speaker. Um, he has been on the Today Show, the Huffington Post Live. He's been on The Doctors. I mean, this guy has done it all. And one of the things that was very interesting about this man is that he actually got global attention for pushing a gigantic testicle across two countries just to raise awareness. I mean, that's awesome, awesome. And we met, as you guys see, we have uh, these jerseys on, uh, yes, yes, uh, Coaches Versus Cancer, where it was the first time that Coaches Versus Cancer brought together 16 great individual survivors to raise funds for cancer awareness during the Final Four. And we were on opposing teams, as you see. I was on the black team, he was on the white team, but we connected and afterwards we stayed connected just because we vibed and we just had similar stories, um, different cancers. And, you know, he's been a great friend. You know, he has a lovely family, you know, a nice, strong young man, Snow. He has an arm like Tom Brady, you know. So before we get into, you know, this up close and personal, uh, Mr. Ballsy, I'm going to give you, you know, some word, a chance to just Tell, tell the world about yourself and, and then we'll go get right into it. Sounds good. Well, thank you for that lovely intro. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it just, you know, I'm just uh, such a privilege to be the first, maybe the first, is it the first interview? This is the first episode. So okay. you, yes, you're kicking it off, man. So, so I'm honored and blessed to be, to be the first, you know, um, just like you said, I mean, when we, you know, when I was first diagnosed and just, creating awareness and doing pushing testicles across America. And just one thing that I really found with my journey when I pushed the ball across America is I really got to connect with people on the streets and hear their stories and just hear about, you know, yes, I got a lot of, a lot of amazing global attention and awareness, but, you know, really brought to a community that I just spoke to on such a deeper level that people were just, so happy that I was just bringing awareness and, and that really touched my heart and just really made me realize why I was doing it all and then just 
getting being connected to coaches versus cancer and you know being the hardwood heroes the first the first group it's just it's um just such a blessing and awesome to time to like meet a group of people and sustain a friendship you know you and i when we met you know we just we hit it off right away we just our energies we vibe you know we just kind of yeah we were on the opposite teams yeah you know went up around you a couple times <laughs> yeah you, you did you, you did it's cool <laughs> yeah you got me though you know i mean you have a stronger background in basketball i'm just i'm more of like a, a goofy harlem maybe bill murray globetrotter type deal um, right which, right you know just it's um you know i got I'm, I'm i'm there for the heart you know and and it's just a um as as you are and everyone else but i'm, I'm just not as skilled as 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 the other as you and the others but um, giving me too much credit, man. I was, I was decent, but I'm, you know, it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Um, yeah. I mean, and it's just, that's what's so beautiful about this community is, you know, I look at some of my closest friends in the world now and I see who's around and it's like, it's like you, you know what I mean? You're, you know, at the end of the day, we went through something very difficult. We met very briefly and we just have this great, um, you know, undeniable forever type um, connection. And that's what's beautiful about, I'm fortunate about this disease is that it's terrible that we have it, but also people that we never would ever be connected to, um, you know, is, is a forever bond. Yeah, I know, I agree, man. And, and you know, when were you diagnosed? You know, where, what age were you at, you know, and, you know, stage three, was that automatically or, you know, uh, I'm trying to think, I'm trying to remember, I think, I don't know if we were, we were diagnosed the same age or not. I was 26 when I was diagnosed. How old were you when you were first? Oh, I was 29. I was 29. You were 29. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. I was 26. Um, and I was in New York, I was in Queens. So, um, yeah. And I just, for me, I ended up having this abdominal pain and lower back pain and I was actually ignoring a few symptoms early on prior. So they actually said I had cancer for at least two years. Wow. Um, so you know, and I actually, my testicle was, you know, a lot harder. The consistency was a lot harder. And I just was like, oh, there was no pain. So I was just kind of ignoring it, um, yeah. which led me to the emergency room. And then later on, they said it spread and it went throughout your lymph nodes and the rest is history. Now, let me ask you, did, did it gradually get to stage three or, you know, or automatically once you got diagnosed and they did all the tests, it was, it was there. It was stage three. You, it was yeah. Boom. Yeah, as soon as they did, because uh, I ended up going in the ER, I actually went to Bellevue Hospital because the, the pain was so excruciating. My testicle just literally blew up to the size of like a small orange or like a medium-sized orange. Wow. And it was just, I barely, I barely remember what happened, but when they, they, they did um, an ultrasound on it, they realized they're like, oh man, this is testicular cancer. They removed it. They did the orichiectomy. And yeah. then they immediately, just to check it for protocol, was to do... Um, uh, an ultrasound and, yep. or um, uh, a PET scan, yeah. to, make PET sure scan? To, see okay. to see if it spread and um, it did and no yeah. sorry not PET scan a CT because they, they did oh, a CT. CT okay okay they did a CT and then they said whoa it's it spread to your lymph nodes and it's infected about over your hundred lymph nodes wow you know it, it just when you say the size of an orange it just brings me back man when I was uh, diagnosed and they said to me, well, you have a mass. And I'm like, okay, that's cute. But, um, but it's growing 60 to 70%. So I can only imagine that the size of a medium ball, I would probably faint. <laughs> um, I would definitely faint. And, um, but it's, it's, but you, you know, how did you, like was what was your first reaction did you go immediately to the hospital like how how did you kind of know like to go to the hospital well immediately what happened was is it started to um like before it got to the small like a medium-sized orange um i started getting these terrible abdominal and lower back pains and at first when i went to the hospital i went to the er my ex-girlfriend at the time took me there yeah and um she you know went to the er they did they were like, they're not thinking right away that it was testicular cancer. They actually thought it was like, um, you know, I had uh, kidney stones or something yeah. like that. So they gave me medication. Okay. And then to take the pain away. I went back. And then as soon as I woke up the next day, that's when it just blew up. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is like, I couldn't put pants on. 
Um, they just had to wrap, my ex had to wrap me in a towel and we, I barely remembered all. We went to, they put me in, they carried me out somehow into a cab and then went to the hospital. And then at first they thought I had a torsion because everything was alluding to like, oh, he isn't, a, you know, they're not even thinking of 27. Right, you know, right. This is 11 years ago. So it's, uh, um, so when they were like, they're like a torsion. So it's a twisted testicle. So it strangled itself and like basically killed the testicles. What they were saying, that was the diagnostic. But then they, that's when they ended up doing the ultrasound um, on it to, to realize it. But yeah, I mean, basically what brought me there was like excruciating pain that I felt like I was going to die. <laughs> Man, that's, that's crazy. Now, I, I know you mentioned your ex and um, outside of that, and I'm assuming that she was like, your, was she your main source? Uh, as far as your support or was, was, you know, what was your support network like? Did you have a, a support network? So that was the problem too with me is um, I kept it. I didn't have a network. Um, you know, mm. my mom was, cause I'm actually, my mom's Canadian. My dad's American. So my mom okay. was back in Canada. So she ended up coming flying in, which was great. My mom was in a main, main, uh, a major support system. But back when I was diagnosed, I didn't tell me any of my friends. Um, okay you know, until I had my lymphatic dissection. So yeah. it was me and my ex at the time um, who were just dealing with the orchiectomy, the ball removal. And then when I found out that I had to have this next surgery at the lymphatic dissection, which I have an incision from the top of my I was just about to ask you, what is that? Because that's a new term for me. <laughs> yeah, so it's like, a, it's right there. Wow. So, yeah, so it's, uh, they basically hollow you out. So your or all the lymph nodes are behind your organs. Right, so right. Organs on the front, and I had a video that ended up getting removed on YouTube, but they basically take out all your organs, they put it on like a tray in front of you, yeah. and then they scrape out all the infected lymph nodes and they put all your organs back. And then it takes a really long time to recover because your organs have to kind of settle back into place because just think about it, you've never, your organs have never been removed like that. And, right. And, and handled like, and they're not gentle, you know what I mean? Cause it's just, yeah. it's, like, boom, 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 you know, taking it all out. It's like operation. They got you and you know, the funny bone <laughs> and this. <laughs> wow, man. Wow. Yeah. So you, yeah. you said you didn't have a support network and you kind of kept it. Why, why did you, you know, keep it, you know, to yourself, you know, like, was it, uh, is the shock value, you know what I mean? Of everything like. My ego, you know, for okay. me, I look at myself as I was a completely different person then, you know, I was the immediate thing that snapped into my, my brain of when I was diagnosed, it didn't really affect me right away that I had cancer. I said, when I first got the doctor told me, he goes, Hey man, you know, I wouldn't say hey man, but he's like, you know, Hey Thomas, you, yeah. you, you have <laughs> stage three testicular cancer, blah, 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 blah. And I was sitting there and I was going, I can do a documentary about this. I wasn't even light bulb. Confident. Light bulb. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was using myself as my own subject and I wasn't truly connecting. I was so disconnected and I was just in this state of mind back then where I was just, I was all about me, me, me. And then it didn't take me till a couple of years later to truly, as I was doing my own awareness and, and stuff like that was when I really, that was my way of dealing with it. I internalized yeah. things and that's how I always kept things. I don't, I have a lot of acquaintances. I have very few close friends. So that's kind that of how I've, how I've kind of always operated. I've been like kind of a lone wolf. And um, so when I did go back to Canada, I did have a couple of friends that came and visit me in the hospital. But other than that, people didn't really know I had cancer other than close family. And then until I put it out in social media world, um, then yeah. people knew. I mean, now everyone knows. But. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's funny how you, you know, you were that lone wolf, right? And you know, it's, it's not easy to share something like that with the world. Um, I know for myself, it was one of those things that I had to digest it, like to really internalize it because one, I never imagined approaching 30 that I would have cancer. Like, mm -hmm. you know, you hear about it, my, my, you know, family members of mine have passed from it, but to actually be that person on Grey's, that I see on Grey's Anatomy, mind you, I watch too much Grey's Anatomy. So <laughs> I heard mass, I was like, oh my God, I, <laughs> it's over. <laughs> but, um, you know, I had to deal with, deal with getting over it, right? Um, mm -hmm. I'll just share that, like, one of my close friends, her mother had called me and said, hey, you know, 
I'm about to tell you some things and I don't want you to take it the wrong way, but one, you got to stay positive. Number two, cut all, all, all your hair off, you know, just cut it off. You know, you got one of the most aggressive chemos and you just need to cut it off. And then number three, be okay with your new you. And I didn't know how to take that, but on the flip side, I was okay talking about it, you know, and I'm not saying taken away from, you know, folks that don't want to, but it was therapeutic for me because mm -hmm. it, I broke down those barriers of folks that were like, um, are you sure you want to talk about it? Because that's, it's a sensitive topic, you know, nobody wants to offend. No, nope. sometimes people don't even know how to approach the conversation, but, you know, um, I think that it does allow, uh, you have to be very careful um, when telling people about uh, it because some people take it to a stream like, oh my God, you got cancer, you're about to die. And it's like, no, I'm not going to die. <laughs> I didn't want to hear that. Maybe I shouldn't have told you, you know? And so I had those moments as well. But I think that um, it, you know, everybody deals with it differently. But let me, let me ask. So, you know, let's talk about this giant testicle, you know, that you did. Like what, how did you get to that space, you know, to create a visual to show people that, like, this is real, you know? Yeah, and I think what brought me there was just my realization and growth um, as a human and, and being a cancer survivor that I was just, you know, being a man. And there's so much stigma around male cancer, whether it's testicular or it's not. There's just women are more open about certain things, right. as you know, you know. So it's uh, it's just it's it's women. Women are more progressive in that way, and they're just smarter in that sense, where they're just they're they're going to like like my wife is. She has yeah. a little a symptom, and she's like, oh my god, blah, blah, blah. you know, she freaks out. She's gotta go, <laughs> gotta go get something. And us, and we're like, oh, yeah, we'll see how see how it gets through, but. But, you know, getting to the ball, I just realized that I had a bigger purpose in life. Yeah. You know, my ego started to get away and I realized that I needed to be a voice for, for young men and yeah. build that um, awareness. And I needed to bring some attention to testicular cancer because other than Lance Armstrong, there wasn't much out there about yeah. it. Um, and a lot of the young guys who were diagnosed, they're between a certain age. So it's typically back then it was um, 15 to about 35. And now it's increased to about 40 or 45. Wow. Was now. But, you know, back then, but the, but the main demographic of young guys who were diagnosed, the hot spot was about 18 to about 25. Wow. So they're like, their mindsets are just it's all ego you mean you have something where it's you're dealing with your testicles and that area down there there's a yeah. lot of um you know issues you know mentally that men go through because that's like what defines us you know in yeah. certain ways so i had to kind of do a little bit of you know because i'm a marketing guy i had to be like all right what's going to be something that i can do to build a lot of awareness bring a little bit of humor get some attention to the cause so get the attention of the media and then I, and then it's my, um, you know, masterful way of educating about the cause because at the end of the day, media doesn't, they didn't really care too much about the testicular cancer or the cancer right. aspect. They just cared that it was a giant testicle coming across America. So I constantly right. had to be media trained in my own sense. Luckily I'm in the industry of just reiterating the questions and making sure that so it's all about the awareness, you know, because they're like, oh, you got a big text testicle, blah, blah. And I was like, yes, because <laughs> cancer survivor for testicular right. cancer. Right, yeah. right. So is that how you got the name, Mr. Ballsy? Or, you know, was yeah, that, yeah. how'd you, yeah, how'd you I, name that? I see. You, you, you are Ballsy, yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I have many testicles tattooed all over me. Um, but <laughs> yeah, I just, I was always known as like a risk taker and just yes. crazy out there and you know I, I i first started as i am balls because i wanted to be a unique um general statement for anyone going through cancer so the fact that it's like about finding inner ballsy like i am ballsy you are ballsy like we're all ballsy and that's what it takes going through cancer is that mental aspect of just finding that ballsy in you was was kind of my whole thing and then i just wanted to embody ballsy and someone called me Mr. Ballsy at one point, just like, you're, you're the Mr. Ballsy guy. And I was like, yeah, oh, like, 
like that. You like that. It, it just stuck with you. Um, yeah. So how do you, you know, being a survivor, it does impact your outlook of life, right? And the decisions you make. How, how was your, be, you being a survivor, how has that, you know, impacted your outlook on life and just the, how you move and the decisions that you make now? Um, it's just, it's, it's part of my every day, you know I mean? Even though I'm, um, 11, 10, 11 years, um, <laughs> cancer free, yeah. lost track now. Um, it's just, it's, it's, it, it has such an impact every day because my, my heart is for the people and just being a resource and educator. I mean, I've taken a little bit of a break from social media Yeah, and just like, you know, my son, like just, he's a boy, he has testicles, you know, we're in a different demographic nowadays and just educating him on the awareness of his body and just letting me know and, and constantly checking his balls and making sure he is yeah. like, that's the big thing is like, it's, you have to know your body and you have to listen to your body because yeah. if something, if your body's like externally speaking to you, just imagine what's happening on the inside. So yeah. every, you know, you like you said earlier too is it's just like you know life is too short you know like we never know how long we're going to live and we just have to live it to the fullest at every moment and take chances take risks because it's the only one we got it's so funny you say that because i um i i always tell people like once once you become a survivor it's like i i survive i've I've done the Toro Toro towards death, right? You know, and um, you do have a outlook of every moment counts, you know, um, and, you know, taking risk is just a part of the game now, you know, but be responsibly though, you know, take responsible risk. And um, I just, I just, I'm, I'm just, it's just so good to hear that because a lot of times, you know, with, with survivors, we, we may be, in a space where we're just so close to like, we don't want to sneeze the wrong way, you know? Trust and believe, now it's like, it's coronavirus, you see what I'm saying? <laughs> so it's just that, and, um, but you did make a, 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 a huge decision and you started your own comic. Talk to us about that and how that came about, you know? And I have yeah. a couple of copies and it, it's pretty dope. It's pretty dope. Oh, thank you, yeah, it's, uh, you know, yeah, we just kind of, you know, when I came up with a concept, I was like, okay, like I pushed my ball. Now what's the next big thing that I can do? So I just looked at like what everyone was doing, you know, and, and the thing is too, is I look at the space of what everyone's doing and I don't, I don't want to take anyone's um, entitlement or anything. So I try to always think of things that people aren't doing in a certain sense and that are like me, you know, that embody me. So, you know, I kind of thought of a cool, concept was just because I mean I love comic books I love yeah. the tv and film industry obviously it's what I do but it's I felt that it'd be and you know I'm an artist so it's just I kind of I thought it'd be a really cool way to connect to people to educate make people laugh a little bit and open up not just testicular cancer like the chapter of like you know I'm I'm 30 I'm 37 now you know so it's for me it's like getting out of that testicular cancer demographic because now for me to get cancer again, I'm, I'm past the point of relapse. So I'm in the other cancer demographic now. So for me, I have to open up my outlet into, because I still want to continue to educate and, and help and um, be, be a public servant in that aspect. So that's where the comic kind of came about. Cause I was like, all right, this is, I always ask myself, anything I do, I go, is it ballsy? And if it's not, then I go back to the drawing book. <laughs> and so um when did you launch the, your first comic so i launched my first comic last year um okay. you know and uh so it's we have well we have two comics so there's one that's like a preliminary one leading into the main story this big one it was kind of more of a uh conceptual book um okay. that's kind of cool it's a little bit more backstory so down the road it'll be kind of like more of a collector's edition type deal okay. but I need that. First, I need. I need that copy. Oh uh, yeah, we'll get you that one. We'll get you that one. Um, I have that one digital right now, not printed. But the first one we came up with um, was my artist buddy on social media, Adam Cosart, who um, was the artist, and him and I collaborated on the story because he's been extremely connected in the comic world, and he's a veteran. And nice. me, I wanted to make sure the cancer aspect and the humor aspect was there, so we co-wrote it and uh, created it. So we do have the first volume available. 
Okay. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Um, now, I guess, you know, I one, I, I, I read the comic, loved it, you know, um, you know, and, I, you know, can we tell them about what's, what's next for that? Or we, we, we yeah. got to keep that on the run. I mean, yeah. and so, you know, um, for you guys that are, you know, tuning in, um, you know, I will be featured in the next volume of the comic. And, and I, my superpower is, you know, beating, you know, lymphoma, large B cell and stage four. So that's to come. So, you know, um, we, uh, we talked about it and, you know, I, I think it's going to be not, it's going to be awesome going to be very amazing you know I'm, I'm kind of like the black panther of cancer you know <laughs> I was, you took the words right out of my mouth i was literally <laughs> gonna say that so black panther meets heavy metal <laughs> exactly exactly I'm, I'm with it i'm with it yeah. and so you know um i um one thing about positive po deposits is our tagline is transforming minds to change lives you know that's our purpose that's our tagline and so I, I just want to ask you, you know, what positive deposit can you give someone that's going either through testicular cancer or just cancer in general? You know, what, what's a positive deposit you can, you know, give to someone that's going through it or, you know, just a survivor and just trying to live in this, even in this world, you know? Can I give two things? Of course. Yeah, you can give three, you know, so okay. yeah. <laughs> Um, one thing that I wanted to say earlier that it's just something that's um, an analogy I always use, whether it's someone, um, you know, newly diagnosed or not diagnosed yet, if there's listeners that aren't diagnosed, if this is just, just typically cancer survivors. But one thing that I always like to mention is, um, because I'm a firm, you know, I wasn't in this mindset and this is just something that I wish I knew when I was doing it was, you know, we, we take care of our things, you know, our cars, our house, we care about absolutely everything. Like, you know, we'll oil, we'll do regular oil changes. We'll do, we have, we have to take care of everything. We have to pay um, bills for our houses, everything, everything needs like a checkup, needs a certain thing, needs to be, needs to be taken care of and maintained, you know? Yeah. And the one thing we don't do is we don't really pay attention to the one thing that matters the most is our own bodies, our own machine, the thing that allows us to appreciate all these other things. So that's one thing that I, I wanted to like deposit is the fact yes. that to um, take care of the one thing that you, you can replace in certain things, but just like you have to take care of it. You have to oil yourself. You just have to have those yearly checkups. You need to be aware. You need to eat right. You need to be, have your mindset, which leads into my next one. It's just one, my second deposit would be just, um, you know, as much as the physical is important, the mind is, is hugely important. You know, it's like we, one saying I love, and I don't know where I heard it from is, is we are where our attention is. Mm. so think about like that. that so it's so our mental state of that if we are sick we are we we embody it like you know you know when you get that feeling and you watch a movie and it and it hits you in that certain way or you get chills or certain things yeah when we direct and take in that energy and if even if it's around you like when you dealt with before about support if your support isn't positive and giving you that good energy then you need to cleanse your cleanse your cleanse those friends or or figure out how you're going to deal with them and take in that energy so really embody the fact of like your mind is so important during every stage of cancer pre-diagnosis to during recovery everything it's all about you know this is my last deposit is just truly being aware of your surroundings and how things are affecting your mind because that will save your life and, and give you a successful recovery. Yeah. You know, um, man, those are two positive deposits. That's amazing because I, I'm really big on the mental, you know, mm -hmm. what you put in your mind, what you, you focus on controls your body, you know, mm -hmm. and that was huge for me when I was going through it, not once, but even twice, you know, um, making sure my mental, and I love the fact that you said, you know, you know, take care of your machine. You know, we take care of our cars, we take care of yards, we take care of everything else. And, you know, so 
it's very important we take care of our machines. You know, so I, I do want, you know, we're in this challenging time, right? This, this weird space. And um, as you know, I'm about to be a new father, you know? So, yeah. uh, which yes. um, that's a blessing, man, because not like other people, you know, when they get diagnosed, they freeze their sperm and things. I didn't. And so I'm very fortunate and blessed. And I know you're a father, you know, um, talk, I just wanted to, you know, how are you and your family doing, you know, during, you know, this coronavirus? I know Georgia did open up, but how are, you know, how are you guys holding up during all this? Yeah. And, oh, guess this, this is exclusive. We have a number two coming. Hey, um, how, how many months? Uh, we'll be eight months tomorrow. Or eight weeks, eight weeks, sorry. Oh, I was about to say, Miracle and, and Ash, <laughs> wow. No, congratulations, bro. Con yeah. See see what I'm saying, man? It's possible, man. It's possible, yeah. but that's amazing. So, I mean, obviously that's good, but how are you guys embodying this new environment, you know? You know, I mean, this is just, you know, having the one, you know, I'm super blessed to be able to have the one and, and now two, you know? So it's just, it's, it's super amazing and just uh during this whole time like we're fortunate you've been to our house so yes. we you know we have some nice outdoors we're trying to keep it active yeah um keeping our mental states really um in a good positive mind frame keeping away abiding by all the rules like really yeah. only going out um to get groceries and certain things just kind of swapping out but just like really pay attention to our food what's going into our body okay um okay being creative you know we did a little bit of a youtube channel just to like okay. play around and yeah just just constantly trying to create projects do things creative creatively being outdoors because that's super important getting a lot of vitamin vitamin d yeah um but just truly in this time of of covid is just being there's not very few times in our lives that we're able to be present and truly uh, be appreciative of being able to be together and yeah. this time is so, so crucial um, because you don't know when you're going to be able to like have this much time together and and as, and as annoying as they get um, <laughs> but, uh, just uh, yeah. but you know it's just it's 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 such a, a beautiful we take it as a positive um, yeah. and we're just trying to stay healthy and, and stay safe okay well let me ask you this if you could give me you know, a couple tips, you know, coming into fatherhood, what are some, some good tips? You know, I've, I've heard a lot of things, you know, one of it is being present, but what, you know, what would Mr. Ballsy say about being a father and, you know, help your, bro help your boy out, you know? <laughs> oh. oh man. Do you have a, how long is this podcast? I'm just kidding. No, we still um, got time. We still got time. Yeah. You know? um, yeah. I, I just really, educated myself being um a father um just being such a great support you know um and just uh looking what's out i mean there's so much you can read out there i didn't yeah. you know and um and and just educating yourself but really at the end of the day when people start i remember when we first started we ended up getting all this stuff and all these yeah. things and we didn't even we didn't end up using half of it so one thing that i would say is like hold back because you can always, we have Amazon Prime now, you yeah. know, and we can always order things, but just, I would say, get your essentials, um, you know, have the changing table in the same room as your bedroom, you know, yeah. just making sure that uh, you're keeping a lot of those things in the same place. But just, I, um, I'm a big firm believer of connection. And as you know, yeah. Snow, my son, um, yeah, I yeah. wore him, I was, I wore him a lot. So I, I get a baby wrap and okay. Um, the babies really develop a connection when they're close to your heart and they're close yeah. to you. So I wore, I wore snow a lot, um, yeah. just in a tight baby wrap all the time. I, cause like, you know, Ashley's wearing, you know, you know, she was holding the baby forever, you yeah. know, for nine months and just giving them a little bit of a break and however we can, because we didn't have to lug that baby around, um, yeah. you know, contributing. Okay. Okay. So keep them close and contribute. Well, I definitely want to thank you, Mr. Ballsy, you know, um, for this time, man. Uh, it's a pleasure. Yes, you are the first and you definitely dropped a lot of good gems, especially those positive deposits that we're looking for. So I know you, um, where can we, you know, follow you? Where can we find you? I know that you, um, you know, you're not on social media, but I know you do have your own company, you know, yeah. where can, 
where can we find you? So I will, I'm hoping to resurface soon, you know, okay. which will be with my comic is, is my goal. I'm going to try to do some rebranding. I can keep you, keep you up to date on that. But yeah, yeah we, we do have another company. It's called Creative School Atlanta. And our, our, our uh, Instagram is Creative School ATL. So it's, um, we're in the educational sector now. So yeah. now that my wife and I were TV producers, um, we decided to capitalize on Atlanta. Um, being the biggest, you know, I mean, Black Panther was filmed here. I mean, there are yeah. so many movies that are in TV shows and films, but the education lacks here. So we've actually started our boutique school uh, for film production called Creative School Atlanta. So that's where people can, can so follow you. So you heard them. If you're in Atlanta, Creative School Atlanta, that's where you can go. And I, I promise you, you will be blessed with the skill set of this Mr. Ballsy. Um, you know, and just so you guys know, uh, you will see more of this. Um, we have, uh, you know, our mixer that's coming up. I'll let you know. You are totally invited, you know, where we are going to have cancer survivors, you know, come together, meet the board of Positive Deposits and, um, you know, and get acquainted. And this will be a bi-weekly thing. Um, I do uh, want to say, you know, I don't, I even give you the website. So our website is up, you know, the launch oh. is coming. And so we do have an Instagram. Um, I, I think you've seen the Instagram. So our Instagram, please follow us at Positive Deposits, I-N-C underscore, all one word, you know, um, and we have our website. I can't give y'all that yet. However, once we do launch, you know, just courageous conversations, just like Mr. Ballsy will be on our, you know, our site. And so um, just like, I said before, you know, we are here to transform minds to change lives. So with that being said, thank you so much for tuning in, Mr. Ballsy. Any any last words? No, just stay safe, stay healthy, and take care of your mind. All right. And then that's a wrap. Thank you for your time. Thanks, brother. Peace.